It is my pleasure to be joined by Chris Duncan all the way from Mexico, um, because you're going to be fighting in Mexico City in in just a couple. Well, at the time of recording this, at least just a just a couple of weeks. But taking on Manuel Torres in your third UFC fight. Uh, before we get into this fight in particular, I want to go back to this last year you've had now in the UFC, because of course. You were Violent Money's 2023 Breakthrough Fighter of the Year, which the fans voted for. And the interesting thing, I think, with that, when we decided that uh, you would be one of the nominees for that, is your Contender Series fight was completely different to your UFC fights, right? And I think that the Contender Series fight proved to a lot of people um, what you're capable of, but maybe, you know, in terms of your, your heart and your ability to stay in a fight. And then the other two... UFC fights you've had those back-to-back wins to kick off this uh, this run in the UFC were very very different and I think maybe uh, a little bit more reflective of your actual skill level like do you think people were kind of underestimating you a little bit based off of that contender series win? Um, I don't really care to be honest uh, people will always have their own opinions um, and that's what makes the sport great everybody's got their own opinion and has favourite fighters and and stuff like that but as the time moves on and as I get fight by fight I'm getting better and better and slowly more confident and trusting my skill set and just growing as a fighter day in day out one of the things that I think um made it incredibly fitting for for the fans to to vote for you in that award is that like I said a little bit like the UK fans I think kind of knew already that you have that in your back pocket if you need it, right? That contender series performance. Like if you need to just bite down on your gum shield and throw with anybody in the world, you can do that. But the the two wins were, you know, more technical, more strategic and things like that. So I think that it kind of, we've kind of got both sides to you throughout the, the UFC, even though we've only seen you in three fights now in terms of the contender series. And then those last two, like, did it feel good to go out there and to, to kind of show people your skills instead of just, you know, that contender series fight was absolute chaos and we all loved it because of that. But I think that, you know, people are a little bit more like, okay, we need to take this guy serious now because of that. I know that you said about, you know, not really listening to what the people have to say and things like that, but I'm sure it felt good to go out there and, and show that you can, you can get those wins without ever having to, you know, dig deep like that contender series win. Yeah, well, obviously, my name is the problem for a reason. You know, I come up with problems and for for everybody. So I'm like every fighter's worst nightmare. I'm like the kryptonite of the lightweight division. Um, <clears throat> the people who train with me know my capabilities and know my skill set, which is what's important. Um, like, imagine you have a full house when you're playing poker and you just show everybody your full house before you go. Um, I'm in this for the long game, so I need to show everybody that I've got weapons everywhere, and that means that there will be a problem when it comes to trying to like uh, make a game plan for myself. Because let's be honest, in my last three fights, I've done everything different: one knockout, I wrestled, and then my second fight, I had a striking clinic. Um, my last fight was a great fight, but I could have, I could have finished. I think uh, I just, with Yanal having the broken arm, I think he was a bit more uh, reluctant to engage, which was, I was finding it difficult to stop him moving side to side. He had really good movement, so um, hats off to him for doing that. But um, things happen for a reason, and every fight I am getting better, um, like dramatically better every time. So I'm just looking forward to the future and looking forward to showing the Mexican crowd the problems in town. Yeah, I've got a feeling that uh, from from what I know about your fighting style, that the Mexican fans are gonna be are gonna be into it. Um, I, I know that I, I saw that you had put a post out and that you were like, I, I promise that this one is gonna be, you know, like you said, I assume because of the the Ash moves fight where maybe you felt like you could have got the finish that you would have come into this one, you know, really ready to to put on a show. I know that we would have got that with the the Terence McKinney fight that didn't end up happening. Um, that was one that when it got put together, it was like. Uh oh, you got to set your clock for that one because uh, you're not going to want to yeah, miss yeah. that and wake up the morning after and, and you've missed it. You know, that one would have been no. crazy, I'm sure. Like, t- even just getting that opponent, 
you know, if you were disappointed that you didn't get a finish against Ash Moves, Terence McKinney is the kind of guy that uh, he doesn't know how to fight conservatively, right? So um, that's definitely one that I would love to see in the future. Like, was it one that you were disappointed to, to see fall off? I know that Terence has got, you know, he's quite a big name and of course, you know, always puts on um, ridiculous fights every time. Yeah, it was a bit shit, to be honest, but it was totally out with my control. By the time the visa appointment came through, it was 12 days after the fight, so I knew that I was never going to get that fight at the end of the day. So, um, hey, let's let's see how he gets on with his next fight, and then hopefully we can meet again, because it's an easy fight for myself. One of the things that we have to speak about when we talk about the, the progression throughout 2023 and stuff as well, is of course the, the time you've been spending over at American Top Team. I mean, the amount of talent that is on those mats every single day is absolutely outrageous. Um, I actually just pure luck was scrolling through social media earlier and uh, I don't even follow uh, Mike Brown's MMA page on Facebook. I didn't even know it was a thing. And it came up uh, a post about you where I wanted to get your thoughts on this because I, I hadn't seen you described in this way, but he described you as having new school technique with an old school mindset, which I feel like, again, your performances in the UFC have kind of showed that the contender series fight was so gritty and just the heart desire to win and, and to not leave that apex without a contract. And then we've kind of seen, like you said, a little bit more of your game and, and switching it up as well and, and getting better every single fight. Like what's your reaction to hearing? I mean, Mike Brown, I think he might be the record holder for, for most coach of the year wins. Like, you know, it doesn't really get yeah. much higher praise than, than coach Mike Brown. No, for sure. It was great to hear that because, you know, I've, I've seen them comment on a lot of people um, uh, and mentioning their fighting style. And he, he kind of does that in the build up to the fights. Um, and it was good to be put on that pedestal along with these guys. So there's a few things I want to check off my list. Um, just selfish things like one of them being what Mike Brown had done and wrote a post about me and the second one would be to get myself a picture on the American Top Team wall um, <clears throat> because they have every fighter that's uh, like fought through that gym uh, pretty much up on the wall you know if they've served a purpose to uh, ATT so I'd like to get myself up on that wall Um and yeah, it was, it was really good to hear. But Mike has been by my side through the last three fight camps and shown me a new lease of life when it comes to uh, striking technique uh, and also the game planning. Um, and also as well, tell me to take my foot off the gas a little bit because I'm all in. Uh, so it's been good to, to learn from these guys. And like I said before, the ATT has given me a new lease of life. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I think that, you know, uh, there will be a lot of fighters, I'm sure a lot of Scottish fighters for sure, that will have been paying attention to your social media and, and for fans uh, especially, you know, they see that some of the some of the guys that you're trading, you know, day in and day out with and they're like, oh, you know, that seems like a completely logical thing to do. Where Where's, you know, one of the best gyms in the world, ATC, go out there and train. But I know that it comes with sacrifices as well for people that have got to do that and kind of up sticks and go to out to one of these huge gyms in the US. I don't know if that really gets spoken about a whole lot, the sacrifices you make. I, again, just through following you on social media, saw the the video that you posted. Uh, I believe it was posted on your TikTok. That actually might be where I saw it. Of uh, the fact that you're going to be welcoming a son. So first of all, congratulations for that because I haven't spoken to you since. But um, Thank you. I can't imagine how difficult it is at the same time. It was a very, you know, uh, like I'm sure a lot of people uh, felt for you in that moment. Um, it was a beautiful video to watch and to see your reaction to it. But at the same time, you know, these are the sacrifices that people maybe don't think of when they see these photos of you training on the mats at ATT, that you have got a family back home that at the end of the day, you're uh, you're making these sacrifices to, to, to improve their lives as well as yours. But uh, I suppose... How difficult has that been at the same time? You know, I'm sure it's been massively beneficial to your career to have uh, a gym like ATT that you can go and train at with high-level guys and high-level coaches. But in terms of making those sacrifices, like, what's that been like over the last uh, year or two? Yeah, it's pretty tough, to be honest. Um, like, a lot of people have got this, like, agenda that they think they should be. Like, a lot of people are, like, knocking Dean Gary for going training and trying other gyms. Um, and like things like Leon Edwards is saying that he's like he's the first UK champion uh, that's came from the UK which is absolutely correct and 
I'm not knocking it, but you know, there's this kind of persona about all these people like stay with your home gym and blah blah blah. Like, I have to do what I have to do to get better, and like, obviously, I'm only been in the the UFC for a short time. I'm looking to make this a fifty fight fucking career. Like, I want fifty fights or forty five, whatever it is. I need this to be something that I can keep going back to. Um, and like I say, there's this like black mark. People always say you should be loyal to your gym and do this and that. And like I've got to go away and do these things because I've been on on the mat now and I know how far behind everybody is being back home. And you get the odd gifted individual, you know, um, which is which is great. But that gifted individual could probably be between five and fifteen percent better if they went to a gym and learnt new stuff. I've grown tremendously in the last two years being at ATT and you can't tell anybody that you, they need to do it themselves so yeah I just and also being away from my family it's kind of it's kind of like a, a double edged sword I, I'm not up in the middle of the night because I'm away but then I miss things like the the gender reveal you know birthdays, Valentine's days days out with the kids and yeah, it's it's pretty tough, you know. If I, I'm, I'll put my hand in my heart and tell everybody like I'm a big softy. So there's been many days I've been upset and crying just because I've been away from my my loved ones. So, um, but it's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make because uh, the money that I'll be making in the next couple of fights is going to be life changing. So, I mean, when you see the when when you look at it and uh, and your your record in the UFC has a has a big three and O next to it. You know, it sweetens the deal, I imagine, quite a bit because that's that's yep. pretty remarkable, especially in the lightweight division, which is you know like notoriously the most stacked weight class there is, there literally is in the sport. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can you you can have an argument that anything between featherweight and welterweight have the most skill, the knockout the knockout ratio, and also the skill set because you know we're like the the average the average human. And the average size between 66 kilos and 77 kilos so uh, yeah I definitely feel that, that that weight class or those three weight classes are the toughest to be in yeah definitely um the final thing I wanted to to get your opinion on um we spoke about this high level training that you've been doing at ACT anyone who does pay attention to you on social media that that you they will know that a lot of that comes with training with Dustin Poirier who of course has a, a huge fight coming up at UFC 299 um I imagine it's been you know not super close in terms of the the you know you could have been on the same card for example but you know very close fight dates so I'm sure you know training alongside him for, for this camp has been has been beneficial to have someone to go through that with I mean ATT there's guys fighting like every couple of days right so it's not hard to yeah. find the ATT but in terms of Dustin Poirier's co-main event slot against Benoit Saint-Denis um your thoughts on on Dustin, having having spent a lot of time with him over the last, well, I imagine since you've been at ATT, it seems like you know every few posts on your on your social media is with him. So it looks like you're in good company the majority of the time out there, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm thinking. Well, I'm not thinking. I have such a good gut feeling that Dustin will get him away in the fourth five round fight. He's going to drag him into deep waters. Um, and like Dustin's such a gifted individual, and he's got a third lung. So, um, I'm looking forward to. Uh, seen them perform you mentioned the the cardio then right of course I insane amounts of, of fight experience for Dustin Poirier especially in the high level at the UFC you know you could pretty much go up against anybody if you wanted to measure uh, the amount of high level experience they've got is that the biggest thing you noticed like the first few times training with him in terms of the you know the biggest difference maybe between him and some other guys that you be because like I said the talent at ACT is ridiculous you haven't got a you could throw a rock and hit a you know top 30 fighter in the world no matter where you are so is that the biggest difference you think with, with Poirier the cardio nah his timing is impeccable um, yeah, good counter counter straights um, he's got a little bit of awkwardness in his boxing um, but it's like it's like a like what's the word I'm looking for like three three attributes that he, he has his cardio his timing and his boxing and his offensive wrestling is, is very good like he's very complete as a fighter and I'm very, very honoured to be able to share the mat with him. And uh, 
another thing that is like another notch in my belt is being able to spend time with him and him to show me the ropes and tell me what to do, when to do it. And yeah, it's been good. I'm assuming, you know, that there's talks of potentially a, uh, a UK card in the summertime. I don't know whether that would be something that you'd be hoping to, to get on. I mean, you know, last year fighting in the UK worked out pretty good for you. So uh, I think that it would be, you know, especially if there's, you know, a fight against an opponent that, that people are also really excited about to come back to the UK and, and for you guys to, to put on our show for the fans. I'm, I'm pretty sure the uh, the UK fans will be will be pretty happy to have you back in the summer if uh, if that's what you're thinking. Absolutely, man. Um, obviously, I have a son on the way, so it's 29th of June, so if I could get one in May time, you know, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Um, well, I hope that that happens, my friend. I hope that this incredible run that you've put together continues. I I'm sure that no matter what happens, you probably won't be being nominated for breakthrough of the year uh, because you cracked that one last year. So so maybe UK male fighter of the year, something like that in 2024. That would be nice. So, uh, yeah, we, we look yeah, forward to it, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, man. No problem, man. All the best for the fight. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch up with you soon after.